broken, 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 trashed, ew, leaking, broken, uh, missing. What's up, everybody? It's Charles. Behind me, as you can see, we have the next in the Project Car lineup, a 1999 Mazda Miata. In fact, to get some inspiration for doing this video for you guys, I went, uh, I went and got a fresh haircut. So, uh, you know, just to, just to really feel the Mazda Miata life. But it's a little weird because it's not a Volkswagen. So let's fix that really quick. V and a W. And it looks as good as probably the new VW logo looks. So we'll add some dots and a smiley face. All right, now that we have that silliness out of the way and I feel a little more comfortable, probably need to order some special tools now as well. Let's talk a little bit about this Miata, what we're gonna be doing with it, some of the things that are wrong with it, take you guys on a tour. So I actually picked this car up down in Atlanta from my good friends at Pull Apart. You guys may have seen that amazing epic showdown of the Pull Apart Challenge. Myself, Engineering Explained, Chris Fix, Eric the Car Guy, Brian's Mobile One, Matt Moran, Bleepin' Jeep, and classic G-Body, we fought to the, well, not really to the death, because we all survived, but anyway, if you haven't seen that, I'll link that up. I got with the folks at Pull Apart, and we found this, <laughs> I wanna say sweet, sweet Miata, but as you can see, she needs a little bit of love. My initial plan for this car is to basically rehab it and get it back to a stock-like situation. Brakes, tires, belts, hoses, filters, fluids, all that stuff, is going to be put back to stock. We're gonna get rid of, I think that strut brace across the top is not a factory strut brace, so that's gotta go. Mainly what I wanna do is I wanna have this as my autocross car for the next season. What that's gonna allow me to do is put some hardcore rehab into the R32 and maybe do something really fun with it that I'm not quite ready to tell you guys about yet, but, I think you're gonna be into it once it happens. So that's why the title of this video is, I bought a race car at the junkyard, and yes, I hate air quotes. Let's go ahead and actually do a walk around. Now, I am not a Mazda Miata expert. Some might say that I've never worked on one of these before until working on this one. Those sums would actually be correct. So I'm really excited to step out of the VW world where I'm ultra comfortable and work on something a little bit different. Also, just like a cursory look, this thing looks like it's the easiest car on the planet to work on. We'll see how correct I am over the next few weeks or so uh, as we, we get this car rehabbed. So, all right, let's go ahead and start under the hood and take a look at what this baby's got going on. So some of the basic things we're gonna be doing, of course, is maintenance, coolant flush, brake fluid flush, flushing out the fluid for the clutch, I'm noticing an oil leak here coming from the valve cover gasket. Definitely going to be fixing that before we do any autocross or anything else, really. Put a new PCV valve on it. New air filter, and while it's not under the hood, we'll be doing a new fuel filter as well. Of course, an oil change. That's the gimme one. Something that really surprises me about this car is it looks like it's so easy to work on. Look at all the space. Like, there's nothing here. What? so different from the German car world that I'm used to. And so I'm ultra excited about that. I do think we're gonna have to get rid of this strut brace across the front here. I do not think that is a factory part. If you know for sure whether that is a factory part or not, let me know in the comments, but I'm like 99 and a half percent sure that is not a factory part. Also, this car does have Eibach springs on it, which are going to be coming off because we need to get it back to the stock springs. Of course, the bumper cover is missing. Our fog light brackets are all smashed in. Fog lights all busted, so we're gonna have to get these straightened out. I may not replace those, I may just leave no fog lights. The more significant damage is actually on the left front here. This fog light housing is all missing, busted. Headlight busted, fender smashed in. The door, when you open it, it's been hitting the fender. You can see it right there. Fender pushed up in the A-pillar. Obviously, this car was in a somewhat reasonable collision. Actually, it's probably not that fast. We can see we got some structural stuff right here going on. Let's actually pull this fender off and see what it looks like behind here. That way we know, do we need more parts or can we get away with just some of the cosmetic stuff? I'm convinced I'm gonna need like one tool to take this whole car apart, but uh, let's find out. So here's what it looks like with no fender on. Pretty cool. 
pretty cool. I'm not seeing anything like structural wrong with it right here. We got that little bracket that looks like it's bent, but we can probably just bend that back. A little bit of damage up there, but that's cosmetic. Guys, if you ever want to see a place and a thing that'll make a car rust, look at that, all this pile of leaves. Ugh. It's maybe a spot you want to check on your car behind the fender, get all that nonsense out of there. So this is really the part where it looks like we're going to have to do a bit of metal manipulation. This is not a bolted on core support like most Volkswagens are, so we may actually have to bend some metal to get this straightened out. I'm not looking for it to be perfect, but clearly we got to have the headlight fit. Now when we move underneath, everything looks pretty good. Nothing like glaring out that has to have attention immediately. We're of course going to eventually be going through the whole suspension and getting everything done. I've been pre-saturating some of the joints with uh, penetrant to make it a little bit easier. We'll also be putting a new front sway bar on it because we can in the stock class for autocross. We'll also have to get new shock absorbers and go back to a factory spring. Now, it may come as a huge surprise. These tires are beat. Look at these tires. Look at how beat they are. They're all dry rotted. So these tires are gonna go. We're gonna get new brakes on it. Initially, nothing crazy, just back to stock, but these, uh, these aren't gonna get it done. Even driving it, and trying to get some of that surface rust off, that ain't gonna make it happen. Back's kind of the same way. Tires are beat, brakes are beat. The body in the back's pretty straight though. This taillight is busted. It does look like some back end damage here too, but we'll not probably worry too much about that. Here we go underneath. We'll do of course a diff service. Now I mentioned that this is not like my car that I know a ton about, but that doesn't mean that we can't pick up on some things that have happened to this car in its previous life. One thing I did notice is it doesn't look like that stud right there or that bolt is factory. Actually, it's a stud right here at the top. And this is a through bolt that someone put all the way through to hold the rear sway bar on. So uh, probably not a big deal. I don't know that I'll even do anything about it, but it is something worth noting. So when you see something like this where it looks different on a fastener from like top to bottom or whatever, pay attention to that because that may be an area where someone's made a mistake. Also, it looks like I have some witness marks right here where the sway bar itself shifted over. Like this line right here looks like it should actually be right up at the bushing. If we come over to the other side, we see a lot of spider webs. We can see kind of the same thing. It's got a clean spot to the right where it looks like the sway bar shifted. So we'll have to fix that. Other than that, from the back end, we actually look pretty good. Axles look good. No leaks back here. No leaks at the diff. We'll of course be getting the car aligned. That's one of our two alignment adjustment points. Here's the other one. Got a couple bolts that look like they got the ground treatment. Now I'm noticing this bracket that attaches right here to the rear end, goes all the way up to the transmission and it looks like it's been out before. And what makes me think that is look at, look at these wire looms. They're either broken or not there. Typically that kind of stuff doesn't happen unless something has happened. So I don't know if this bracket has been out or maybe there was a heat shield that got ripped out right next to it on this side because there is one over here. Just little things to look for when you maybe don't know a certain car very well. Those witness type stuff are dead giveaways. Cat's been drug on the ground. Heat shield's been drug on the ground. Now when we're underneath the car, clearly, we have some oil residue. I'm not sure if that's just from the valve cover leaking or we have other oil leak points as well. That'll be something we will be addressing, of course. But like always with oil leaks, this is a top-down thing. So you fix the top ones first, then fix the bottom ones. Here's our front alignment point there. Also looks like maybe the transmission has been out. Maybe that's why those wire clips are broken on that bracket. Look at how dented up that heat shield is on the header pipe. To me, that probably means that somebody was trying to shove the transmission in or get it out. We can also see on our bracket here, look at that clean spot around the bolt where that bracket was probably three millimeters further back than it is right now. So I'm going to almost, not guarantee, but I'm going to hardcore guess that that transmission has been out, which could be a good thing. Maybe we had a clutch put in it and that's not something I have to worry about. A lot of bottoming out on this thing though. Oh boy. Oh boy indeed. Got our eccentric bolts for our alignment. Probably do some engine mounts as well. 
looks like somebody didn't have the right tool to take that plug out. I'm guessing that's the fill plug for the manual transmission. We may replace that, although I'm pretty confident I can get that out and back in without any issue. Talked about things being crazy easy to get to. For those of you VW people, look it. Here is the slave cylinder. Right here. It's just right here. Just chilling. Couple of bolts. Don't even have to remove anything else. Just boop, right there, hanging out, doing its slave cylinder thing. All right, so here's the rest of the car. Nothing really uh, amazing to look at here. Is it me, or did some cars just look cool with no fender on it? I think that's pretty neat. So the outside's not too bad, minus the front end damage. Our top is actually in pretty good shape, other than being very dirty. Clearly this car sat for some pretty good length of time. This is our tail light that's busted. Let's take a look on the interior here. Seats, kind of sad. Car, very dirty. But, otherwise, not in too terribly bad a shape. Car has, let's see how many miles on it. I don't even know how many miles the car has on it. So we got 163,000 miles on it. Looks like someone did some sweet plasti dip job there and installed what I'm guessing is not this factory speaker setup, but it does have a roll bar. A roll bar with no padding on it. Those are the kind that you get to whack your head on and it feels real nice. The top does close pretty much minus this side. Will not latch properly, so I just got it zip tied right now. We'll get that fixed at some point soon. This side, on the other hand, is okay. There's a better shot of that sweet head basher roll bar here. We'll have to get some kind of padding on this thing or just take it off. It's fine when you have a helmet on, but you surely don't want to whack your head on it. So all in all, I actually think this is going to be a great platform to build for a stock class autocross car for next season. I think it's going to be a blast. Some of the things that it needs are pretty basic, just basic maintenance. Some of the bodywork looks also pretty basic too, which should be a lot of fun. Now, if you guys saw anything else out of place on this car while we were doing the walk around, drop that down in the comments and let me know. Of course, we know brakes, tires, belts, hoses, fluid flushes, the bodywork, of course, alignment, that kind of stuff, suspension. We're going to need to do all that anyway. But if you saw anything I missed, make sure you let me know. Also, if this car has some like random, weird, limited edition packaging on it, make sure you let me know that too. Hope you guys are as excited about this thing as I am. I can't believe I'm so excited for just like a crappy Miata, but uh, I'm pretty excited for just kind of a beat up Miata. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you guys again next time.